Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I am your gaming monk. Now looking at the title of this video, you might be inclined to make all manner of assumptions of me being elitist, or similar isms and or phobes. But as was said in Hamlet, though this be madness, yet there is method in it. In the last couple of years, I've seen a lot of videos, comments, tweets, and so on, decrying gatekeeping and how wrong gatekeepers are. Some of them are cringy ones claiming that they have defeated gatekeeping. The repetitive nature of these claims, as well as the broad statements on the hobby it's rooted in, always rang hollow to me. It comes off like someone who thinks burning a symbol of something is a victory against that person, when all you did was just set a trinket on fire. In other words, a straw man. I understand where these people are coming from, and I believe they believe they're doing the right thing. But I would argue that gatekeeping is not the devil you think it is, hence the title of this musing. I will note a significant amount of this is built upon the foundation of an Action Points video from 2012, Commodification of Nerd Culture, which I highly recommend watching for additional context. In it, AP explains in detail how the people who claim publicly to be a nerd are anything but most of the time. They merely jumped in on something that was popular while pretending otherwise. At the time, there was a degree of controversy over the notion of fake geek girls. While the current gatekeeping debate is not exactly the same as that one, the two discussions share enough in common to invoke such. In both cases, the subject is what constitutes who is a real fan of a given subject matter and who's merely riding a trend. People who argue against gatekeeping usually present some half-baked idea of what gatekeepers argue on the matter. People decrying their accusations of fake argue that it's wrong to ask questions to test their knowledge of a subject matter. Different paths, same destinations. Obviously, there is no definition of real fan in this case, because what constitutes as such is subjective and based on intangibles. In the same vein, questions asked by people are not the interrogation that it's claimed to be. It's merely attempts to break the proverbial ice in conversation. This is not done out of malice, merely to observe how someone reacts and what their tells are. There are innumerable intangibles in conversation, and this is no exception. More importantly, this is not something unique to enthusiast culture, it just takes on a different form. Another claim I hear is that the hobby, medium, etc. being for everyone. I understand the intent, but I don't agree that a hobby is. I don't think a hobby is for anyone, nor do I think a hobby is against anyone. It merely asks for a certain mindset, a certain X factor, that some people will have and other people won't. Now, for example, I've been an advocate of tabletop RPGs. And while I argue they're far more accessible than people think, I will admit it demands that specific mindset. As a case in point, my review style is less about giving a game an overall score and more about who I would recommend a given game to. Pretending every hobby is for everyone, akin to the myth of the wider audience, only leads to disaster when chased. As I said before, that greener grass on the other side is only green because of the radiation. People who are in the community out of passion rather than fashion will always be able to spot the inauthentic, and thus will react negatively to those who appear to use the fandom status in a way that is unearned. If you're not willing to learn, ask questions, and merely step in like you know what you're talking about, don't be surprised when that's called into question. Now, of course, there are gatekeepers who I disapprove of, the bad actors who think that only people they approve of should pursue a hobby. That attitude is the opposite swing of the pendulum. Gatekeeping is not the devil, but it's not an angel either. Balance is more important in my opinion, and even more so, clarity. If you're going to fight, target the real enemies, not the imaginary ones that let you easily claim moral victory. Stay frosty!